going on YouTube? Like the video says today, I wanna to give you some tips so that you're not broke by 30. All right, we're gonna be going everything that you need to do money management wise to secure yourself, your family, and your loved ones to have a better financial future. Okay, so I wanted to share some interesting statistics here before we started the video. So the mean savings of the age group from 25 to 30 is $11,250. When I say this though, Keep in mind that the mean average is gonna be skewed very high to the one percenters because the one percenters have so much money. The median average is much lower at 3,240. So that essentially means by the time you're 30, the only thing you're gonna be having is that amount in your bank account at that $3,240 in savings, which is very, very low, all right? So without further ado, we're gonna get right into the video. Be sure to smash that like button down there for the YouTube algorithm. Let's get started. Okay. These are in no particular order, but they are very important, all right? Each and every one of them is very important, and you know, based on you and your habits, they're gonna be more important to you more or less okay so number one on the group is going to be opening up a Roth IRA and then maxing out your 401k contributions all right this is pretty standard across the board the Roth IRA your money is going to be growing tax-free and that is going to be your after-tax money okay so you put that money into the Roth all right it's already been taxed by your employer um, it's already money that you have you know paid taxes on and then it grows tax-free so this has the ability to be a game changer for you when you retire but will also increase your wealth more and more by having money in the market so by the time that you are 30 you would have more money by opening up one of these accounts and having that grow than if you did not. All right, and then 401k contributions, this is gonna be big because most employers have a matching program. And when they have a 401k match, you're pretty much getting free money from them, okay? So everything you put into that account, depending on your employer's you know, pay structure, they will match your money and then put more money in that 401k. Keep in mind, the 401k also has very good tax benefits because you can be used as a tax write-off for what you contribute to that, all right? So you can get money back from your W-2 income by using that 401k. What you want to do is open up an individual brokerage account. I personally use Charles Schwab, and this is where I park 70% of my money. I know that's going to be controversial, but you know, at such a young age when you're in your early to mid 20s, you know, I would say you have a little bit more leverage to put money in the market than not if you had a family, kids, and a house. All right, so right now I don't have any of those things, so I'm able to let my money grow in that account. What you do is you just go to charlesschwab.com or Vanguard or some other site like you know TD Ameritrade open up an individual brokerage and then you can just start buying and selling stocks. What I would do is I would stick with a broad-based index fund, um, you know, something that is sort of a mixed basket of all stocks so that one of them tanks, another one will be able to pick up the slack so you won't lose nearly as much money. This is gonna be incredible to do because if you keep your money in a savings account, you're not gonna be able to get nearly the returns by the time that you're 30 as you would if you had invested in the stock market. Another one that I started doing recently is a money market fund. Um, you know, a lot of times when I have excess cash and let's say the stock market goes way up, so I don't wanna buy it just yet because it's a little bit inflated, what I'll do is I'll put it in a money market fund. The money market fund values right now, last time I checked, is at 4.63%. So that means if you kept your money in there for a year, you're gonna be getting 4.63%, which at how volatile the stock market is currently, that might be a good option for some excess cash that you have. Yet again, more money than a savings account would provide you. Next is gonna be absolutely have an emergency fund. Stick this in either a high yield savings account or maybe even you know some sort of money market account if you trust that enough to do that. Money market accounts are, are government backed, so they're uh, you know they're they're very safe. But you know my advice to you would be put it in a high yield savings account and just forget about it. This is for anything that happens to you, roof leaks, family emergencies, so that you can just pull the money. Should be three to six months of living expenses. Make sure that nothing can happen to this money and that it's easily accessible to you. Now. This one might actually be controversial as well, but I think you should be open to swapping jobs every one to two years for a higher income. Studies show that people that job hop every one to two years have 50% more money based on the time when they retire. So by looking to go to more companies that will suit you better, you have that leverage from your previous company and you can use that and you know show future employers that and then that is going to be your old base and then you know, you'll be able to leverage that to get more money at another company. So. I wouldn't feel very prideful in sticking with an organization for an extremely long time. Do what's best for you, do what's best for your family. 
One other thing I see people doing um, in their 30s is buying very expensive cars, okay? A car should not be taking 15% of your take-home pay, all right? Cars lose value as soon as you take them out of the shop, okay? So they're not something that would be considered an asset in the slightest. So you go off as soon as you drive that car off the lot, that thing already decreases value. You go and try and sell it, you're not gonna be able to recoup the same amount of you know, costs that you put into it. So in my opinion, if a car can get the job done, which is to get you to point A to point B safely, um, I would go ahead and get that car as opposed to the car that has uh, the super surround stereo, you know, front dash cams, like all those kind of things. I wouldn't even worry about that in the slightest. I would just go and get a car that works and drive it. All right, the next one is I see people in this age group become house poor. They get a good job and then they think, oh, I could buy a majorly expensive house. Now, if they get that house, it's 50% of their take home pay. All right, so then after all the expenses, their car payment, food, gas, groceries, everything that's hyperinflated right now with inflation, um, you know, they're not able to take home any. So you could even be making a million dollars, but you know, if you have to pay a million dollars a year on your mortgage, you know, you're not gonna be able to take away anything from that. Thing is you should be looking to invest in real estate whenever you can. You know, your personal house, and, and I'll argue a lot of people always say this, your personal house is an investment. I don't believe your personal house is an investment because for 30 years you're paying that thing down just to get to a point where you'll be able to sell it and you'll be able to make all your money back. If you look to invest in real estate, you can turn a profit every month, and then at the same time, you're going to be able to sell it in 30 years for more of a profit, and then perhaps you'll actually be able to pay it down quicker, or you'll be able to do other options like cash out refinance a little bit quicker, which a cash out refinance is pretty much taking out the uh, equity money when you go and refinance a loan so that you'll be able to do more things with that cash that you're gonna get on hand. So investing in real estate is crucial that I don't see a lot of people doing, and uh, you know, that's why. I see a lot of people in their 30s, exactly what they do, they keep the same monotonous job, they buy a very expensive house, they buy a very expensive car, sometimes they even have a very expensive uh, boyfriend or girlfriend, things that just keep lining up and they're not thinking about these finances and then by the time that they are 30, you know, we're getting to the point where you lose out on a lot of compound interest over time if you don't start that earlier on in the journey. Alright, so that is it for me, hope you liked the video, peace.